welcome to Kim Talks Resilience, where we share stories of insight and inspiration in life, love, and business with resilient women from around the world. Speaking with authors, entrepreneurs, founders, and coaches to learn their strategies for a more resilient life so we can all build the life we love. I'm your host, Kim Hayden. Hello and welcome back. Uh, super excited to have you here today. I, um, you know, I love it when we find like-minded individuals to kind of dive in and see how we can support you in your day-to-day -day journey, how we can help you live your best life. Because that's what we're all here for, you know. Uh, Monica, let's see if I get this right. Monica Inestroza Curtis, otherwise known as Mick. A girl with a pen is wildly captivated by the human condition. She freely shares her growth journey and other stories in a relatable say it and mean it blog. This is cool. Get ready. Together joy or otherwise to get her joy. Mick believes in the power of storytelling and encouraging women to unleash their inner voice and author up. A socially conscious influencer, Mick aspires to make a difference, one story at a time. Mick partnered with the Kinley Project in 2022, leveraging their collective power for good. They are dedicated to the empowering women through connection, collaboration, and creation. Together, they wholeheartedly believe that anything is possible when women unite. Can you see why? This amazing woman is a reason we need to be here today. Welcome to the show, Monica. Oh my gosh, Kim. Listening to you read my bio really gives me the chills because it's absolutely what I have been dreaming about and doing and being. You know, we often say you gotta, you've got to see it and believe it and, and be it. And we've been doing that through the Kindling Project. So I'm so excited and it's so empowering because you know, more than anyone else, Kim, that the, there's a world of untapped potential in women. And I feel like I'm working in a minding field. I'm just digging it out and finding these women. And it's been such an incredible journey. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. My favorite thing to do. I don't know if you noticed, I love reading bios. It's my favorite thing. I used to read uh, Dr. <laughs> Seuss books to my kids for years. And now I get to read everybody's bios. It's my favorite thing. So it gives me a moment to feel like I put that superhero cape on. Yeah, I love it. And I, I think that I'm glad that you mentioned that I go as Mick. Um, obviously, my name is Monica Nostroza Curtis. I shortened it to Mick because I felt as I was reclaiming my story in my life, I, I, Monica just wasn't defining me anymore. It was just one part of my story. And, and neither was my last, my married name, which I love being married to my the love of my life, but it's not Monica Curtis. It's also in Estroza. And that's so, you know, part of my childhood, part of looking back and connecting the dots was really important in understanding who I am today and who I want, the example I want to be for others. Um, so that's why I go by Mick because it encompasses all of me. I, you know, and I, and I get that. I mean, it's funny cause I'm now turned into Kim talks over the last five mm -hmm. years and, uh, th to the point where my husband goes, well, what about me? <laughs> yeah. So let's yeah. talk, um, let's talk a little bit about who you are. So you just mentioned that, you know, the, uh, Innistrosa is part of who you are along with Curtis maybe Monica is not the, the defining kind of who you are right now, but mm -hmm. so what is it about the, the, the origin story, the Innistrosa story that influences or impacts who you are today? Uh, boy, greatly. I'm Latina from Honduras. Um, so I came to this country. So English is my second language. And when I'm one of six children, so very traditional Latina family, uh, moving to this country, not knowing the language and the barriers as a young child, really trying to immerse myself in a culture where it was very different than what I understood. Uh, and then having my father being very machismo, very typical man and um, deciding that he was going to abandon us in essence and take off and left our family in horrible financial strains. 
um, in a foreign land in many ways. My mom wasn't even working at the time. Uh, she was a traditional stay-at-home mom, a very good Catholic uh, wife. I and, had a feeling the Catholic yeah, was in there. <laughs> definitely. So, and then creating that sort of the years of pain of not literally going to from light to dark. And when I mean dark, I mean like not even having electricity. So mm -hmm. going to a point where we went from having it all to having nothing and simmering in that as an as, as a child and nine, 10, not really understanding what was happening. And of course, back then, your parents never talked to you. You know, they never even acknowledged you as human beings. We just were something they dealt with. And uh, I think my mom, looking back, was probably going through her own emotional oh. hardships. Right. And yep. in me, I didn't understand any of it. So getting through that, being an own, being a, a fourth in the lineup, uh, wearing a lot of um, layers. And that's really when I started to put on that mask, that mask that I decided to like, how am I going to survive? How am I going to pretend that things are okay? And I realized that I spent half my life putting on a mask and now I've spent the last 10 years taking it off and actively working daily on making sure that I don't wear any mask and being my authentic self. But that's definitely my childhood has had a huge impact on knowing the difference of trying to survive and mm -hmm. just in it versus, oh, okay, that doesn't have to actually define me. I always say for a long time, I felt very comfortable in that, not a victim mentality, but thinking, oh, my yesterdays, my yesterdays. And at some point I realized, you know, those roots are deep and they are definitely who are the ground in me in many ways, but my trunk are, is so much stronger and my branches, what I can grow the new branches, that's unstoppable. That's on me to redefine it and dream big. Uh, but I could have easily based on my history, and that's just a very a quick glimpse of it, could have gotten very stuck on the pain. Yep. Deciding We're, not is not, is the important thing. Where so many people do get stuck. Quick question for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. The age your mother had to take on the gauntlet of six children and no finances. Mm -hmm. Have you already surpassed that age? Yes. Have you ever, I, I went through that. I remember when I was 35, 30, I think I was actually more 40. I think I'd actually mm -hmm. passed that my mother's age, a very similar story to yours. And I sat there one day and I go, I can't even fathom the pain mm -hmm. my master, mother have gone through. And it, it, it is a, a, a pretty interesting point. And you're absolutely right. I mean, parents of yesterday, uh, and even still today, that 70 year old parent still doesn't think in the child as a person. Correct. So it is a, interesting. You and I can have a whole nother conversation Woo! all around because I am the eldest of four girls who came out of a very abusive, like documented abusive space mm -hmm. with a mother that we had to move into my grandparents' basement, 700 square feet for five of us. So I get it. And I get the no electricity. I get the no yeah. TV. I get the food stamps driving across mm -hmm. the city due to the shame or the embarrassment. But I also get the strength we get from that and the compassion we get from that. And that's what once I want to talk about is what you're doing today, because what you're doing today, I want to dive into everything that you're doing today, because that really does take insight and strength and compassion, mm -hmm. right? So your mother's journey, your mother's pain. Yes. And so getting... we always say in our house or my mom, and we talk about this um, because we're older now and she's she has no choice. I'm now the question, the asker. So she's forced to have these tough conversations. Although I'm sure in her generation still very much would rather not even speak of it. Yeah. But we always say, you know, for us, for my mom, she, she worked so hard to make sure that whatever her ceiling was, was our floor. And that's the way I try to raise my kids too. I'm going to keep working and eventually hit my, you know, my ceiling, but hopefully I'm just doing that for my kids floor because I want them to go even higher. And that's what my mom has done for us. And so the whole process of 
strapping on my big girl pants in my 20s and really deciding, okay, I can no longer carry the shame of my the past of my family. I am not longer responsible for being the adult in the room, which I had to be for so many years. I am no longer responsible for my siblings or their well-being. And um, I had to go through a time where I really needed to disconnect from my family in the most loving way, not from a, a place of hatred, but more from a place of like, who am I? Who, what am I going to be? And defining that. Um, so I did spend though, like most traditional women, like got married, fell in love, got married, had two cute, adorable boys and um, have trying to navigate the world between this traditional role of being a stay-at-home mom, raising my children and um, putting my needs and wants in the forefront. Um, so I wish I could tell you that I got it right. For a long time, I, I didn't get it right. And I haven't been getting it right since um, I think for the last five years is when I finally figured it all out, but I am almost 50. And so, um, I started blogging. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going in a big circle for you. I'm sorry. It's all good. Like I'm there's listening. So, okay. So there's so much to share. So basically I spent my twenties uh, and thirties uh, being a mom and, and raising my kids. I worked for a long time. Um, my husband and I both couldn't go at the same pace. So I decided to be a stay at home mom and gave up my career. And that was another point in my life where I, I tripped up because I realized, oh my gosh, I've now worked so hard to create a, an identity for myself through my career. And now I am a stay-at-home mom. And I'm going to be honest with you, I know this isn't so popular, but I resent it. I resented the heck out of the fact that my husband got to go and uh, glow up, I say, and I got to stay at home. And even though I love my children, um, it just wasn't fulfilled. And that was you know, it was embarrassing to say or shame or like yep. judgment. And being, that. being a full-time professional homemaker, mm -hmm. which is a chef and, and a school volunteer and all, it's hard. It, it is, is hard. hard. I tried it for two years and I, I failed miserably. I, I, I'm not, I, I don't have enough self-motivation mm -hmm. and I don't have, I didn't have enough self-identity uh, to do, to do that. And I, I have mad, mad respect for women who go next level at being those, those anchors within our school system, volunteer programs and yes. our anchors within our neighborhood. So, so I want anybody out there who is listening to this, who did crush it as an at-home mom and have no regrets. We, we honor you. We're not, we're not, you know, it's just, that it's not, it's a hard and it's not, and I understand the regret thing mm -hmm. because I've, I've heard regret on both sides of mm -hmm. that aisle. I, yes. I, you know, and it's hard when you're sitting there going, I have regret around this. Well, I think for parenting in general, it's, we always <laughs> navigate in this world of it's, yeah. you know, it's, we're teeter between fear and love. We teeter between yeah. coulda, shoulda, woulda, or didn't. And it, it, that doesn't change, even as I have almost two almost grown kids, I say they're 20 and 18. They think they're grown, but they still need me in so many levels. Um, but it's those decisions we make. Listen, if you're a stay-at-home mom, I applaud that. And I, I and I don't regret it because I know my yesterdays make who I am today. But there were moments where I thought, here's what it came down to, Kim. I caught myself clapping it out for my kids so loud being at every game, every basketball game, every event, as they were applying to college, I kept saying, boys, dream big, go for it, do anything yep. you want, anything, the sky's the limit. And then I realized, when did I stop doing that for myself? When did exactly. I stop clapping it up for myself? And it, it had been a long time. I, yep. I put myself in pause for a long time. And so I always tell young women, hey, if you're going to be a stay-at-home mom, amazing, by the way, because all those in-between moments are delicious and you want those delicious moments. Yep. Uh, but if you can keep your toe, your toe. Exactly. Dipped in something. That is it. the beauty of today's world. And God mm -hmm. love the millennials. 
for oh. all that we've poked at them. The reality yes. is, is that millennials showed us that the gig economy, the, the side hustles, all of these are opportunities to continue building your brand while you're building your children or while you're, you know, you, you don't have to, we can do three different things at once. You no longer have to go to somebody's office 9 a.m. every freaking day and give them the largest chunk of your life that you can do it for yourself. Oh, they are, they are so much smarter in many ways uh, to your point, like good for them. And they are teaching us stuff, but what I'm afraid that we are still not the women or the young girls um, is that they still lack the um, ability to speak up sometimes. And yep. so to answer your question, here I am now, what am I doing today? I found the, my blog through my blog to get her joy. I started writing about these pains, these pain points that I was really feeling like this pivotal, like where I am asking the big questions, what is it that I want? And then the more I wrote, the more people were raising their hands around me saying, we feel the same way. We too feel those pain points. We too are questioning where am I, what am I supposed to be doing? What do I even like and enjoy? And so when I partner up with the Kindling Project with my partner, Melissa, she had also in her own universe started the same questions. And we thought, hey girls, we are doing this. We're asking the same questions. We're doing the same things. Let's come together. And now our company, the Kindling Project, is really a dedicated space for fueling and fanning that tiny little fire inside all of us that we have as women. Because what we're realizing as Gen X women specifically, who we are targeting, is that we have been playing small. So everyone around us plays big. We have been stepping aside and making room for everyone else to glow up in our universe. And we're saying, you know what, ladies, that's wonderful. But let's add one more thing to do on your very long to-do list. Let's add you to that to-do list. We're not asking you to replace your life. How about we enhance it by stopping to say, hey, what do you want? And we're handing out permission slips and say, hey, why not your dreams? Why not you writing that book? Why not you starting that club? Why not you running that marathon? Whatever your passion project is, small, big, doesn't matter for my one of my besties is like starting a family so we talked about that's her kindling project is that um getting to the point where she can deal with her infertility and have a child and so kindling project is anything that your brings passion brings that little fire the little nudge the little you know those whispers the little yes more of you and i tell you kim if we make room for these women and hand women these mics to give them the permission to say yes girl everything changes boardrooms change politics change landscape changes because we're now speaking up and being our true authentic self and my personal mission is i want to be prince flippin charming and i'm waking you up sleeping beauties it's time to wake up where too many of us are on autopilot, just going through the motions, yet not fully living. And I'm saying no more. Not next week, not when my kids grow up, not when my husband gets a promotion. No, no, now. The power is in now in this moment. Sorry, I went on my little- No, no, don't, <laughs> never apologize, never apologize. Because those of us who are speaking up need to be loud enough. We need to be mm -hmm. loud enough that we hold space until the next person is willing to, or able to speak up. So I love the fact that you're taking space because you're holding that space mm -hmm. until somebody else can speak up. So we talk about oxygen mask and we have to put our mm -hmm. oxygen mask on first, right? So let's, I want to apply this to the kindling project. Okay. Through the kindling pro project, what is the oxygen mask? What is the tools that they're offering or supporting women with? Okay, great. I'm glad you asked this. So uh, we launched the company a year ago, and thus far we have uh, we're, we're all about creating these spaces and through collaboration and sisterhood. Uh, one of the spaces where we want women to simply speak up or feel like they're they're part of something. We have a private face face uh, Facebook group uh, where women can share and inspire and uh, share each other on. 
We also have a podcast, the Kindling Project podcast, where we interview women who talk about their Kindling Project and their pivots in life. Because oftentimes, as you know, uh, we wear certain roles or we do certain things because we were told it was probably the right thing, um, you know, go to medical school or go be an attorney or do the job that fits your family and accommodates everyone else. And we're saying, you know what, it's okay to pivot. And so we share stories of women who were once uh, attorneys and now are owning businesses, refurbishing furniture, because that's really what they're passionate about. Uh, we also have online courses that people can take to really align with themselves and their true passion, their true purpose. We have, we're creating events where we, again, holding spaces to inspire women because ultimately for me is inspired action. I don't want to motivate you. I don't want you to be like, oh, that's such a nice story, Monica. No, I want you to listen to what we're saying, go into one of our spaces, listen to Kim and say, Wow, Kim has inspired me to make it to change something, do something different today that goes towards what my ultimate needs and need, you know my wants are, and so that's what we're doing. So through our eBooks, through our podcast, through our community, through our events, through our uh, networking event, we're just out spreading the word. It's a platform to wake up these beautiful sleeping beauties. And we tend to build based on personal experience. Mm -hmm. We tend to want to create solutions. Women are solution creators. I mean, yeah. we designed the fire escape. Men built the the multi billion, <laughs> the multi multi level housing, but we built the fire escape. They built giant steam cruisers, but we designed the first lifeboat. Uh, yeah. They made a car, but we put heat in it. So we're solution creators. These th this is pretty cool. So I want you to share a moment of resilience that had you not pushed hard, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. I think for me, the, the breaking point um, in my adult life is probably like many through COVID and realizing, you know, through the, our national or international timeout that we had, that we were all forced to like go to your room and yep. think about what you've been doing um, is understanding that I became so angry at the world, not because I was at home or COVID was happening, just the divisiveness in the United States with politics drew me to a really breaking point where I was becoming the very person I hated, meaning I, I became judgmental. I was saying radical statements like, well, if you're a Republican, you must be racist, which is absolutely not true by the way obviously but i was just so angry at our our leaders and so upset with what's going on that i thought oh my gosh what am i doing this is not who i am yeah i i can't, I can't how quickly i can get into this narrative and this negativity and simmer in that no 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 pause hit a bit pause reflect redirect i need to be the person the change i want to see in this world i need to go out there and be a light and be positive because ultimately I know goodness exists. So for me, the resilience of saying, okay, I, this is easy. I could sit here and hate and I can sit here and point fingers. Yeah. The harder part is like saying, oh, where have I been wrong? And, and what narrative am I telling myself and calling bullshit on myself? Cause I'm so quick to call bullshit on other people's. I'm sorry. I'm, I curse. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's all good. I just caught myself. Okay, I apologize. It's all good. And so is for me that moment of saying I can do better and be better. And starting from that moment, Kim, I promise you I have worked diligently. So no matter what happens, and even as we grow our business, where things aren't, as you know, when you're starting up as an entrepreneur, it's not like, oh, great, you have an idea. Here you go. It all works out. Here's your finance. Here's your thing. No, it's a constant struggle. And we get obstacles put in our way every single day. But for me, as the desire of my message, the desire of what I want to do has to be greater than any obstacle. And knowing that, you just step over it, whatever it is, finances, people, issues, fear, imposter syndrome. It's like, nope, you're my friend today. Thank you for teaching me that I need to do better, do better and be better. 
And it's that constant thing. So in every day, I find resilience in the obstacles, resilience in the people, resilience in life. Things happen all the time that are heartbreaking. But for me, it's like my desire to spread a message of, yes, you can. Why not you speak up, um, women, I think is greater than anything at this point. And I'm such a, on such a mission. I am whoo, laser focused. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And this is actually the beauty of being 50. We still have 20 years uh, and 30 years. I've interviewed women on the show that are 30 years old who are still on the lecture circuit doing their, following their passion. Um, who's, who are you reading? Who are you following? Who are you listening to? What's inspiring you? Oh, so many, so many. Um, in particular, I, I keep thinking about, are you there? God is, it's, it's me, Margaret. Um, because the movie just came out and I, I have blogged about this. Uh, Judy Bloom has been one of my favorite authors, especially as a young girl, not really being lost for so many years. And I remember reading that book and my mom, this is a gift my mom has given me. She, she always found a way to buy me books, no matter what the situation. I don't know if she picked them up for 10 cents at a garage sale. I don't know, but I always had a stack of books thanks to my mama. And Judy Bloom was just my favorite. And I remember, even though my mom was raised Catholic and we were baptized Catholic, I think my mom grew up with nuns. So she kind of faded a little from going to church every Sunday. It was, she wanted to give us a different um, perspective on religion. And when she gave me that book, the idea that I could sit in my room by myself and just talk to someone who would just listen, it really anchored my relationship, my spiritual relationship. And to this day, I am not a church going person per se, but I'm, I'm very spiritual. And that connection to the man upstairs just brought me a lot of peace. And to this day, it probably was the most pivotal book in my life because to this day, I don't start my day without, I have my daily dosages and I have my five Fs, non-negotiable for the days. But one of my Fs, is faith and um, and not just like a spiritual connection and praying, but also through journaling and meditation. It's just the really one of my anchors. And you know what? It's funny because my sister a year ago uh -huh. um, ended up buying the entire collection of Ju uh, Judy Bloom. And she reads with her daughter every night, all the Judy uh -huh. Blooms. Her daughter is 10 and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very interesting, the different journeys we're all on. And yet we all can get a, a messaging, a very poignant, because I mean, that was, uh, are you there, God? I mean, there was actually Judy Blooms, like, now my sister said she didn't realize some of the stuff being discussed in some of the books. Uh -huh. They're pretty real. It, yes. I mean, when we're going back to the 80s and these books, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> So my, my sister has been a little uncomfortable, but she's has not omitted or stopped reading any of them because very, very real books. And in all reality, these are probably books we as adult women could go back and reread and yeah. gain insight that can help us maybe heal some of our younger selves mm -hmm. and grow our messaging for our current selves and our future selves. Um, so true that you say that, you know, that, uh, and you're right, that coming, coming of age is such a critical part. And I'm wondering if that's one of the reasons so many mothers handed it to their daughters, because, you know, back then, our moms weren't having those conversations with us. So they were like, here you go, have a book, read about it, learn about it. And you just mentioned, I think is a very, very important term coming of age and ladies, mm. if you're out there and you're sitting here and you're grappling, you're 45, you're 48, you're 50 and you're going, what have I done with my life? Oh, honey, you got so much time. So much time. This is, this, this is the next coming of age. And this is the one where we make the biggest impact. We've, oh. we've re we release the shackles, uh, what media thinks we should look like. Uh, what mm. other people think we should be, uh, what our bodies are dictating. And now, it's the true essence of everything of who we truly were always meant to be. 
I'm so glad keep you're here, preaching. Monica. Yes, keep. Preaching, I'm so glad you're is, here. We are going to have others. we are going to have another conversation off air because I think there is absolutely huge amounts of alignment here. I love everything that you're talking about. Um, I want to remind everybody before we get into all of Monica's uh, um, different socials. Uh, Mix um, blog is to get her joy or together joy, whichever way you want to look at it, folks, yes. whichever way you want to take it. And what a great play on on words. Can you walk us through all of your socials, the way that we can uh, find you, follow you and connect with you? That would be great. Absolutely. So, yes, my personal blog is to get her joy um, dot com. And that's where you'll get a glimpse into my personal journeys. It's really First-hand look at my journals. You're going to get the messy, the funny, the not so great, the great parenting and the not so great parenting. I always say, you know, it's like uh, not a great week to be mama bear here. Uh, but I also, I would really tell you to focus on the illuminator section because that's my favorite part of my blog is where I shine a light on these incredible women doing amazing things in our community who are just lighting it up. So it's less about me and it's more about these really incredible women. So check that out. And also, please, please, please check out the kindlingproject.com. That is the company Melissa and I are building. It is a big stage for women. We're inviting you. We're handing you a mic. We're handing you a, a, a dream catcher. And we're saying, yes, you can. So the kindlingproject.com, please join us from there. You can get to our, our Facebook Ignite private group. You can listen to us at the Kindling Project podcast. Um, and I'm sure Kim, you'll share all these on your show notes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also do check out if you're like me and you love LinkedIn, uh, jump over at LinkedIn and find Monica. And then from there, you can link into everything wherever you, you feel comfortable. Uh, I bet you, you can find, uh, Mick and her whole crew over at the Kindling project. Um, because you're kind of like me, you're a little bit everywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But you, yeah. I, you know, I think earlier we were talking about social media or these platforms. And it's so funny. That is definitely not my generation is generational thing. Like taking selfies and putting myself out there. It's a very uncomfortable. We, I mean, yes. I, I, Mel Robbins, she's crushing it now, but she's had to work five, six years to get comfortable in that space. So we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll yep, get there. Yep. Oh, and to remind you, Mel's older than us. So <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> No, and sorry, I'm sorry if I'm going too long, but when I was no. recently going to the Tina Turner Broadway um, show that they're having, I've always known her story and of abuse or resilience, talk about an incredible woman, but, you know, she kind of, after her divorce and being stripped away economically, she then spent many of her 40s, like cleaning houses, doing things that were crazy. And not until she was in her 50s did she peak again and is the Tina Turner most of us know now with the crazy hair, just killing it out there. So I'm like, girl, at her 50s, she's figured, you know, she killed it. And to your point, Kim, we've got so much time. We've got so much time. But the time is now. Start now. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. I am with you 110%. So I always like to show, share, uh, have our guests share a quote at the close of the show. And the purpose of this, if this is the first time you're listening to the podcast or you're here every week, the purpose is that if you are hitting a tough spot, if you need that little push, if you need something, I want to give you the the voice that we can plant in your ear today the quote that you can borrow to give you inspiration or strength so uh mick can you share with us your quote happy to um and it's just a personal mantra of mine it's just do better be better in everything you do take a look pause reflect redirect is it where you want to be and is there room to do better and be better not only in your job but as a as a mom as a spouse partner uh, as a human, from a humanitarian standpoint, can't we all do better and be better? I think there's room. And if we just push ourselves daily for that, do better. I think it, it makes a difference. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. You and your crew are a rock star. And I wish you, Mick and Melissa, absolute success because your success is a reflection of other people's success. And that's the best kind of success out there. 
All it right, is. folks. Until next time, thank you so much, Mick, for popping by. This has been such a powerful statement. I know I'm going to have a hard time finding your audiogram because there's so many good statements and, and quotes in here. Um, but until next time, folks, all you have to do is be good to yourself. You know, that's all you got to do. Thank you for joining us here today at Kim Talks Resilience. I'm your host, Kim Hayden, and I'd love to invite you to our resilient community at resilientgift.com. That's resilientgift.com, and we'll send you our magazine and tickets for upcoming events and all sorts of cool things we do here. So be sure to keep watching, and you know what? Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share, because we all know that sharing is caring. <laughs> <laughs>